In this video, I'm going to talk about azimuth. So let's have the simple diagram and imagine that uh, this is the rational horizon. So the sun rises like this from east, goes here and sets in the west. So from the north direction, whatever angle we have, that is called azimuth. So well, let's define the azimuth in a proper way. If you see this rational horizon diagram, where north, south, east and west, these are the directions and uh, WQE, that is the equinoctial here. Well, if the sun is rising like this, then sun has to be at the rational horizon and the sun will move on this declination circle, will cross the observer's meridian here and the sun will set in the west. All right. So at any given time, suppose sun is here at X. So we are having this triangle and we would like to call it as PZX triangle. Okay. So in this PZX triangle, angle Z is called azimuth. Now, how can we define this? We can define azimuth as angle at the observer's zenith or arc of a rational horizon. So here, suppose a body is here at X, then whatever is the arc of rational horizon, this fellow or angle at Z contained between celestial meridian of observer. By the way, this is the celestial meridian of observer because it is passing through the observer. This is also principal vertical circle. Okay, and vertical circle passing through the celestial body. So, there is a vertical circle which has to pass through the celestial body. Well, in this diagram, in this rational horizon diagram, this vertical circle is expressed with a straight line here. So, that is the definition of azimuth. Well, in order to understand the concept of uh, rational horizon, let me just explain uh, the concept briefly here. Suppose Earth is rotating like this and this is the North Celestial Pole. So, you will see the celestial sphere will appear to be rotating in opposite direction. All right. And this is the equinoctial. So, if we cut the rational horizon, it will look like uh, north, south, east and west point on the rational horizon and the observer will be at the center. So, observer will, will be at the center and as the observe as the sphere rotates the sun will appear to be moving like this it is rising like this and it is crossing the observer's meridian and it will set like this so at any given time so angle z that is the azimuth let me just repeat here this is the angle at the observer's zenith or arc of rational horizon contained between celestial meridian of observer and vertical circle passing through the celestial body. Now, let's talk about how to express azimuth. Well, we can express azimuth as a three-figure notation. So, we start with the reference point that is north or 000, and we go in the clockwise direction. So, this is 090, this is 180, this is 270, and again, this is 360. So, we can express azimuth in three-figure notation and here the reference point is north or 000. Similarly, we can express in quadrantal notation where we need to take the reference from north and south line. So, this quadrant, it will be north x x degree east. This will be south x x degree east. Now, this side, it will be south x x degree west and this side will be north x x degree west. All you have to do, you need to measure from north-south line and you need to go either east or either west depending on the quadrant. Now, coming back uh, for calculation, uh, the calculation uh, of azimuth can be performed by using four-part formula. Well, the four-part formula is not discussed here. Uh, it seems to be a bit complicated. However, the four-part formula is converted into three factors, that is A, B, and C, and that is what we need to discuss here. So, before we start discussing the ABC factor, let's uh, understand the factor P. Okay, so suppose uh, this is the center, this is the pole, and you are looking from the north pole, this is 0 degree, this is 180 degree. 
So LHA is measured westerly from zero from the observer. So if you are in this uh, direction, so that means the body is westerly and we will say P is equal to LHA. Now if the LHA is more than 180 degree, if the LHA is more than 180 degree, this direction, so P will be 360 degree minus LHA and the body will be on the easterly side. Let me give you one example so that you understand better. Suppose LHA is 100 degree. So P will be 100 degree. Okay. Now, if the LHA is uh, 200 degree, that means this is more than 180 degree, that means the P will be 360 degree minus 200, that is 160 degree. Okay, so that is the way we need to compute, to, uh, we shall talk about another factor which is called A and A is 10 latitude upon 10 P. Well, the naming of A is opposite to latitude except where LHA is between 90 and 270. Similarly, we need to find uh, factor B and the factor B is uh, uh, 10 declination upon sin P. Alright. All right. So, factor B is 10 declination upon sin B and the naming is same as declination. Now, we need to find out C. C is sum or difference of A and B. Okay. If A and B are same name, then add and retain the name. And if they are of different name, then subtract and retain the larger name. Then we need to find 10 azimuth. 10 azimuth is equal to 1 upon C into cos latitude. Well, so whatever value we obtained, uh, we need to uh, use the prefix north or south. That will depend on the name of C. Similarly, we need to put east or west. That will depend on LHA. If the LHA is uh, greater than 180 degree, obviously it is east. And if the LHA is less than 180 degree, it is going to be west. Let's have this ABC table. ABC tables are provided in Norris table. Suppose here LHA is 50, 50 degree. So obviously P is going to be 50 degree. And latitude is 10 degree. So if we look at the table, we will realize if we go here at 10, this is the latitude part. The This row is... Uh, about LHA. So, we have this value 0 0.15. Okay. And the naming opposite to latitude. So, latitude is north. So, we name it as south. Okay. Similarly, we, if we want, we can compute also A is equal to 10 latitude upon 10 P. So, LHA is less than 180 degrees. So, P is equal to LHA. So, the value of A 10 10 degree upon 1050 is 0 0.1479 or we can round off to 0 0.15 and that is south because it is named opposite to latitude. In case you, if you forget the naming part, you will see here at the almanac, it is always written here in the table. A is named opposite to latitude except when our angle is between 90 and 270. Now we will go to the table B. Table B. LHA is 50 and declination suppose it is 20 then we have this value which is 0 0.48 and always named as declination. So here the declination is north we will name it as north. Now if you like to compute we can do the computation also B is equal to 10 D upon sin P. Alright so we put the value D as uh, 20 degree and P as 50 degree. So, we get this 0 0.475 or we can round off to 0 0.48 north. Now, we know the value of A is 0 0.15 south. That is what we had obtained here. Alright. And B is 0 0.48 north. 
So we know that these are different names because one is south, another one is north. So we subtract and we get the value of C as 0 0.33 and we retain the larger name. So larger name is, the, is north, so we take the larger name. Now we go to the table C and with this 0 0.33 we realize that with latitude 10 the value given is 72 degree. Okay? And then the naming part, the first part will be according to C, the C is north, so it is going to be north. The second part depending on the LHA, because your LHA is less than 180 degree, it is going to be west. Well, we can do the same computation with the help of uh, 10 azimuth is equal to 1 upon C cos latitude. So, we put the value here, C is 0 0.33 and cos latitude is 10 degree, so we get 71.996 or 72 degree and the naming is similar to what we have done here. Uh, the first part is according to C, which is north. The second part is according to LHA. If it is less than 180 degree, it is west. If it is more than 180 degree, it is going to be east. And that is how we can compute azimuth.